Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast aimed at intermediate to advanced level English learners. Over the next two weeks, almost every country and world leader will gather in Glasgow, Scotland, to attend the world's most important climate conference, the COP26. What are they going to discuss? Who is going to attend? Will it be a success? And is it really the last chance to save the world? Let's discuss this on today's episode of Thinking in English. But first, why not follow the Thinking in English Instagram page? Thinking in English podcast or the link is in the description. I post regularly um, and I put lots of stories up and I've just started making reels. So please go and give it a follow. Um, and definitely have a look at my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog, for all transcripts and some extra special bonus content. Here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. Conclusive. Conclusive. Proving that something is true or ending any doubt. For example, they had conclusive proof of his guilt. Industrialization. Industrialization. The process of developing industry within a country. As in, the rapid industrialization of Asian countries has caused many social problems. Drastic, drastic. Especially when talking about actions, drastic means severe and sudden or having very noticeable effects. For example, many employees have had to take drastic cuts in pay. Summit, summit. An important formal meeting between leaders of governments from two or more countries. For instance, world leaders will meet next week for their annual economic summit. To tackle. To tackle. To try to deal with something or someone. For example, I tackled him about his disrespectful comments. Jargon. Jargon. Jargon is special words and phrases that are used by particular groups of people, especially uh, in their work. For example, I couldn't understand what the lawyer was saying. He was using so much legal jargon. Net zero. Net zero. When talking about the environment, Net zero means removing as many emissions, so gases that cause the earth to warm up, as it produces. For example, the main goal was to be a carbon neutral or net zero city. Reluctant. Reluctant. Not willing to do something and therefore slow to do it. For example, I was having such a good time, I was reluctant to leave the party. The science is pretty conclusive. Human actions have caused our planet to warm up. Latest research shows that we have already heated the planet uh, 1.1 degrees Celsius compared to before industrialization. And these temperatures are very likely to continue to rise above 1.5 degrees in the next few decades. This doesn't sound much, but for our planet and for our environment, it's very damaging. In fact, the past decade was already the warmest on record. As temperatures increase, there are various highly destructive consequences that come alongside. We will see more extreme weather events, more flooding, more droughts, more forest fires, more tropical storms like hurricanes. Ecosystems and animals will be threatened, species endangered, 
and people's livelihoods at risk. Oceans will rise and countries, especially those in the Pacific Islands like Tuvalu or Kiribati, may be completely lost. However, there is still some hope. If the world carries on with no change, then we will see potentially terrible consequences. But if we take drastic action to change the ways we use energy and pollute the environment, then we might still be able to stop temperatures from reaching the most destructive levels. This is why the UN climate change conferences, known as COP26, is being described as the world's last best chance to save our environment. So, on this episode of Thinking in English, I'm going to try to explain what COP26 is. Who is joining or attending the meeting? What are they going to do or announce? And if COP26 can really save the planet. So, what is COP26? Simply put, it is the biggest, most influential, most attended and most important climate conference on the planet. In 1995, the United Nations started to host an annual, so every year, event, inviting the leaders of almost every country to come together and discuss environmental problems. Every year since, apart from 2020 because of the pandemic, every United Nations member, which has signed up to the United Nations framework on the climate change, so over 190 different nations, has been invited to attend the meetings. They discuss climate targets and try to reach agreements on how every country can work together to solve problems. These annual summits have the formal name Conference of Parties, which is where the acronym COP comes from, C-O-P, Conference of Parties. This year is COP26. The summit is being hosted from October 31st to November 12th in Glasgow, the second biggest city in Scotland. This year is seen as particularly vital if climate change is going to be seriously tackled by the world. Actually, to be completely honest, I'm quite sure that almost every single COP meeting has had a similar theme or discussion. You know, the meeting is the last chance. But I guess this year is slightly different, as last year's COP was cancelled. And this year, they are trying to present concrete plans on what to do for the future. If you've paid attention to previous COP meetings, you will likely have noticed a lot of different jargon and announcements. The Berlin meeting in 1995 produced a mandate. Bali 2007 produced an action plan. Kyoto 1997 a protocol. Durban in 2011 a platform and Paris in 2015 an agreement. Basically, while all technically different things, these COPs all resulted in some kind of agreement or plan for change. Not every COP is successful, however. Copenhagen in 2011 has been described as a complete breakdown. In 2015, due to what is known as the Paris Agreement, agreed at the COP that year, all countries agreed to make major changes in their economies and industry to keep global warming to only 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Furthermore, all countries have to keep making larger emissions reductions until reaching net zero in 2050. For COP26 in Glasgow, every country is being asked to explain what they have done and what they are planning to do to achieve the Paris Agreement. And I guess this is one of the major reasons why uh, COP26 is being described as so important. 
Most countries have already revealed their plans to reduce emissions before the COP26 starts. But there will be a lot of new agreements and announcements over the next two weeks. Many of these decisions will be highly technical and scientific, about specific targets or methods to implement the Paris Agreement. However, other announcements which could affect us maybe even more significantly could include ways to speed up the switch to electric cars, uh, how the world is going to stop using coal, what to do about deforestation, and how we can protect people from the impact of climate change. Up to 25,000 delegates from 200 different countries are expected to join the summit in Glasgow. This number includes world leaders, politicians, diplomats, scientists, the media, business people, and activists. However, three of the most important countries' leaders are unlikely to travel to the UK. China's President Xi Jinping, Russia's Vladimir Putin, and Brazil's Bolsonaro. China is one of the world's largest polluters, Russia is a major producer of fossil fuels, and Brazil is home to the Amazon rainforest which is one of the uh, best methods or best ways to clean the air. So these three leaders not attending COP26 kind of has some serious consequences or potentially might have some serious consequences on the decisions made at the event. Moreover, 100,000 protesters and activists are expected to campaign at the event. No matter what you read in newspapers or see on TV, cops do matter and they are important. Some people say they're not, but they are important. All countries agreed in 2015 to limit the world's rising temperatures, which is it's, it's amazing, really, considering rules which mean that the decisions and the pace chosen was chosen by the least willing country. So, in a nutshell, the most reluctant country, the country that wanted to act the least, is the country that decided how fast to make changes. This is because if you asked, for example, a country like Kiribati, the tiny Pacific island, which I think at a highest point is only two or three meters above sea level, well, they would probably say for everyone to stop using fossil fuels today. But then if you asked India, it would be a different answer. Perhaps more important than the actual events are the accompanying community of scientists, diplomats, activists and the public, which has successfully changed the way people view the environment over the last 25 years. And this is why the cops are so important. They make sure that we remember and understand how precarious our environment is. There are still quite a few issues. For example, fairness, particularly fairness for Asian countries. For Asian economies to continue to grow and develop, they will need more energy than ever before over the next 20 or 30 years. If they keep using fossil fuels, these countries will also have to deal with major costs and environmental problems. However, if they give up fossil fuels, they are in many ways giving up more than developed Western countries. This is because in Europe, emissions are already falling. But in Asia, energy use will continue to increase over the next few years. Europe started using fossil fuels especially on an industrial level, and they started developing almost 100 years before many Asian countries started. India, for example, has made this argument constantly over the past few years, and I think China has made it a lot as well in the past. They say that other countries, like the USA, Germany and the UK, who industrialised over 100 years ago, should be held more responsible for their historical pollution. Basically, my country, the UK, we industrialised first, a long time ago. We produced so much uh, emissions from coal use and, and burning fuel, 
And we kind of finished industrializing about 30 or 40 years ago. And now we are telling other countries they have to stop using fuels that we used for over 150 years. Is that really fair? There is also the issue of climate justice. Developing countries tend to produce less pollution than the rich developed nations, and they are certainly not responsible for most of the historical emissions. However, it is developing nations that are most at risk from the effects of climate change. They need more money to help and cope with environmental problems like drought and flooding. Some of the good examples, I mentioned one already, uh, the Pacific Island countries like Tuvalu or Kiribati, if the sea levels rise, these countries are at risk, not just of flooding, but of completely ceasing to exist in the future. Or a place like Bangladesh, which also has a very low, uh, a very low country. If sea levels rise, there's massive risk for flooding in some of the world's most populated cities. How will we know if COP26 is successful or a failure? You, it depends who you ask, I guess. For the UK, the hosts this year, um, well, they are likely going to push for a strong statement committing all countries to net zero emissions by 2050 and major reductions by 2030. The UK are also going to ask for pledges on ending coal's use, uh, switching to electric cars and protecting the environment. And I guess some other Northern European countries will probably also ask for similar things. Developing countries, on the other hand, will want more money and more financial help to assist them in adapting to climate change. Some scientists, however, believe COP26 can never be successful. Instead, maybe we have left it far too late. And no matter what is agreed during the summit, the Paris Agreement will never be met. So here is today's final thought. On this episode of Thinking in English, I have tried to introduce COP26. I tried to explain what COP26 is, who is attending, and what they are going to do. I also introduced a few different issues that might be raised. Although the world agreed to change things in Paris 2015, there are still many unanswered questions and decisions not yet made. How are we going to remove carbon dioxide from the air? Who is going to do that and who will pay for it? How much help are the poorer developing countries going to receive? What are we going to do about communities most at risk from environmental change? What do you think? Will COP26 be a success or failure? Is it the last chance to save the world? Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a review or rating, recommend it to your friends, or let me know on Instagram. My Instagram is Thinking in English Podcast. The link should be in the description. Uh, and make sure you check out the Thinking in English blog. I love hearing from listeners, and I really appreciate all of the messages I have received over the past few months. Feel free to send me a message or I don't know, give me some advice or recommend a topic. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.